Okay, Pisces, this is your August 2016 reading. Um, I already shuffled, laid out the cards, and cut the deck, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, oh, let me show you the spread really quick. So, um, in the Thos deck I have in the little booklet, there is a spread called Magical Triangle. And I love magic, and I, I love triangles, so <laughs> that's what we're doing for, um, for, well, at least for the August readings, anyway. So, um, the first three cards here, uh, okay, that's the current situation, and then four and five is how it transforms and evolves, how the situation evolves. And then this is the, the sixth card is the final outcome, okay? So, and you have a really nice reading here, too. <coughs> Just starting off, you have the Ace of Pentacles on the bottom. So, and, uh... Liz the lizards here, the chameleons, lizards, um, in ancient Egyptian symbology, they represent, um, coming into your more imaginative and creative, um, side, so, and then in Native American medicine, because I had a dream about a lizard, uh, well, a bunch of little lizards that were scuttling, uh, scampering along by my feet as I walked. I felt like a giant and these, all these little lizards around me. So I looked up, uh, lizard medicine and the totem, lizard totem represents the lull, L-U-L-L. -L. So that's, that's the, the, um, the daydreaming. Okay. So, um, daydreaming and thinking and fantasizing is very important because that's, how scientists and inventors and artists, um, it's that creative flow, allowing that creative flow to come in. And with the Ace of Pentacles, it's a new beginning. So you have this fertile seed that just needs um, some coaxing along. So you pr it, it does, it basically does it all on its own after you put in the good intention of growing it properly, so providing the proper soil and pH and compost and watering it just, you know, just what it needs. And so by you doing all those steps properly, that intention is pure and it brings forth um, the, the fertility within the seed. And then... Um, it grows and flourishes from there. So just think about what what you're cultivating. What seeds are you what seeds are you planting? Um, and it starts with the basic soil and all that stuff. So doing it all right from the very beginning, the proper steps, the proper procedure, with patience and all the um, ingredients necessary to uh, sprout this seed and have it flourish and come to fruition. Um, so that's your responsibility. The seed's already encoded by God to do everything perfect the way it's supposed to be and the way it's supposed to do. And you're, you're the steward of that. Okay, so what, what things do you want to bring forth into your life? Do you want to bring love into your life? What, you know, do you want to bring more money into your life? Um, and it's a pentacle, so it's a tangible <coughs> thing that you want to bring forth. And from what I see in the cards, um, you want to bring forth some news of some abundance, prosperity, good fortune coming your way. Um, but crowning, you have the Four of Swords. So this kind of goes with the Ace of Pentacles as far as the, the lull of the lizard. Um, that fantasizing and daydreaming, um, and this isn't a forced one. It's not like the hermit or the hangman. It's not major arcana. It's it's 
just the four of swords, the suit sword. So it's your thought and you choosing consciously to go into a state of respite, um, rejuvenation, renewal, uh, restoration through rest, okay, not doing stuff, going out and doing stuff to get into alignment. Um, it's more of like the meditative, um, the stillness and the silence uh, like the hermit does to, to uh, kind of detach and go into exile um, in order to realign with self. So and she has these swords going, not going through, but under her head like as a pillow and then she has one here that goes from like makes a T with those swords and that's the mind and the heart connecting okay so and there's like this golden light around her and um, the lotuses these are pink lotuses and the lotus represents you know uh, seeking um, the spiritual seeker and then specifically the pink lotus um, represents enlightenment so um, so when she first went into rest perhaps they were white then when she comes out of rest she's gained that clarity because um, you know, the white lotus is the spiritual seeker so you start off that way when you come out of exile you're now the pink lotus you've gained that enlightenment okay and um so maybe you're resting or or you need to take a rest in order to figure out what your next move forward is and where you want to go with that Ace of Pentacles. And then you have the Eight of Wands and then come on. And then it goes eight, nine. So the nine of cups there. <coughs> and the nine of cups um, that's like the wish fulfillment card so it's not just making a wish but um, that this wish is going to come true or, or has come true for you and the fish um, uh, like in, in Chinese culture they represent um, prosperity abundance good fortune plenty so it's not just you know the ace of pentacles and you got rest so your mind body spirits restored you're feeling good in your body your mind your heart and um or mind body spirit however you want to say and so you feel good in your body you feel good with your resources where you're at financially um tangibly and then you also have love admiration companionship this is being uh, like a big fat happy goose okay you're just you're very glad you're very satisfied you're very satiated in your life or you want to call that in for you but it's going to happen because it's the nine of cups so um, whatever you're wishing for it's, it's um, bounty on the horizon and because here in, in this Eight of Wands, she's blowing the little um, dandelion puffs, you know, those little spheres, and they have all the little seeds, and they drift off like little fairies into the wind, and um, it says in the booklet, the further they travel, the more knowledge they accumulate. So, whatever it is you're cultivating, you want it to go reach out as far as possible and bring that goodness to as many as possible you want it to be far reaching so and it's kind of like when you make a wish and you blow it you know it it's goes very well with the nine of cups and it goes eight nine so you're in the process you're progressing towards uh, that nine of cups and because it's an ace of pentacles it might be just the beginning of that but it is definitely coming in coming in for you because you have the wish fulfillment card you have you know a new beginning wishing for the future and coming in for you just maybe need to get in the stillness and the silence a little bit to kind of figure out maybe some detail 
work, you know, just um, fine tuning, okay? And then we have the judgment card. This is how the situation evolves. So the judgment card and the king of swords. And um, I'm just going to read from the booklet because it's so poetic and beautiful. Um, the judgment card actually and the king of swords. So, um, judgment is is you kind of just taking stock of your life, um, doing self inventory work. It's not, you know, it, but it's a call that comes from outside of you, perhaps. But it's you doing the work. Okay, it's it's not someone else wagging their finger at you and going, you did this and you did that. That's not what judgment represents. And, um, and I've been through it in my dream, and judgment is just the releasing of self. Um, which is not that easy to do. So this is what we're all trying to work towards and progress towards, is getting to our true organic self and what we really want out of life. So upon the, the arrival of Judgment Day... An angel sounds the horn to send out the blast of truth. Okay. Let all the souls rise to that call. Then and lay their deeds out to be seen and judged by all. Let the spirit be cleansed with burning light and fire to be made pure. Yes. So there comes a time for every, everyone when an accounting must be held. It is time to evaluate the phase of life just past, to recognize and to appraise with an unbiased mind and honesty to oneself. Just You just have to be honest with yourself, okay? And that, uh, a guru that I used, I've seen all his videos, Sadhguru Jage Vazudev, uh, he's all about, uh, he has the Isha, the Isha Foundation as his, foundation and uh, inner engineering is his big thing and uh, one time he said you know if you're honest with other people or not not so uh, you know important maybe not so important but you do need to be honest with yourself it's very important to be honest with yourself and I will, I almost want to like talk like him because with his voice I love that guy but so yeah just being honest with yourself that's the most important thing okay like I said, it's not someone wagging their finger at you. It's not you wagging your finger at yourself either. So, <clears throat> every action has its result for good or for ill. To be rewarded or to bear the need for absolution and forgiveness, cleansing and atonement. And beyond that is a transition onto the next phase, a rebirth and a clean slate to begin again. So, just like I said, okay, with the Ace of Pentacles, right? your new beginning and it, you can make it it's a clean slate so you can now paint the picture you have a blank canvas okay you can use any medium you want every color you want it's all up to you um, so red poppies are a symbol of sleep and death sometimes as an offering for the dead like blood their color stains the field brilliant and beautiful from that life-filled expanse of delicately swaying crimson and gold butterflies take wing to bear the spirits outward onward i'm sorry in the metamorphosis of the soul the wide freedom and endless blue of the beyond awaits so it's infinite possibilities right now okay you, got, you have the eighth of pentacles all you need to do is get the stillness and silence and and take some you know, go into exile <laughs> a little bit and just think about what it is you want. You have this fresh, clean slate and it's going to be wonderful for you. Very fulfilling, okay? So that's what judgment's calling you to do right now is just take an honest look at yourself, you know, rest, reflect, and with clarity because you have the King of Swords. So you're going to see it clearly and know exactly what you want to do and where you want to go. And it's going to be very successful for you. But you have the Eight of Pentacles, so you do have, you know, it all takes work, whether it's making phone calls or doing research, whatever it is you have to do. <coughs> so, and that card is just beautiful. The endless blue of beyond awaits. So, 
Release and renewal, absolution, the freshness of a new dawn, a new start, making a judgment, though it might be harsh and difficult to face, the necessity of hard choices, though it might be difficult and hard to face the necessity of hard choices. Though it might be harsh and difficult to face the necessity of hard choices. It, that's, it's written a little, um, not so much in my flow, sorry. <coughs> so, face down those decisions, recognize the need, and forgive. Reawakening the mystery of birth and death, the voice of destiny summons you onward, hearing that undeniable call and being drawn to act upon it, knowing what must be done. And because you have the King of Swords next, you uh, will get those answers by going into the stillness and silence, going into exile, <laughs> just being with oneself. Um, you'll get that clarity. So, so the King, like the vertical sword he holds, at the ready, he is a pillar of strength and morality. He holds power of life and death. Okay, so just like the judgment card, okay? He is a warrior king. <coughs> Sword always drawn so that he can be prepared to spring to action should the need arise. He is a leader, riding triumphantly at the forefront of his army. He carries through with his actions, following the path of truth that the blade lights for him. He is led on by the silent wisdom of the owl. She perches, balanced, upon the very tip of his blade, and her eyes swirl with all the ancient knowledge that her kind has been imbued with by human beliefs. Mirroring the owl, he is also led by the shadowy ravens that trail at his side like Hugin and Mugen, or Hugin and Mugen, Odin's <coughs> twin ravens, thought and memory. Those are the names of the ravens. They fly away to seek out truths and bring their findings back to be whispered in his ear. In conjunction, they are the balance of night and day. They are the sharp clarity of the sun, and the owl is the truth that can only be heard distinctly in velvety light of stars and moon. Ooh, wow. See, I, that's why I wanted to read these two. This is what is embodied in those avian companions. The shadows of the night descend upon his shoulders, a living mantle of purple, a color the ancient Greeks associated with royalty, and the base of the throne is etched with da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, symbolic of the blend of art and science, of the symmetry in the human body and in the whole universe. So as above, so below. <coughs> and uh, natural and spiritual law, when people separate God and science, it's actually all one. So, just you know, beautiful message, and it's just all in in um, in alignment with that base card of Ace of Pentacles, okay? There's the King of Swords, here's the little Vitruvian, I don't know if you can see that, the little Da Vinci's, uh, and then, oh yeah, there's the little Al, so, um, and then we have the Eight of Pentacles, okay, so, um, then you have to get to work, or you might be at that stage because this is the final outcome. Well, this is the current situation, how it evolves. This is so you may not be quite here yet, but you're thinking about all the steps you have to take, the work you have to do in order to get to um, where you want to go with this new beginning. It's it's a clean slate, and you have infinite possibilities. Um, <coughs> but uh, it is time to get to work. And the spider works diligently, um, very crafty, hardworking, um, very much knows how to use the tools that they have. So, you know, I'm not sure what the specific scientific name is of the, you know, the part, the body that shoots out the silken thread to create the web, but it's those tools within inside you that you have already within you to create the world exactly how you want it to be. And the spider works with what they have because, and, and also everything they do is an, 
in alignment and in tune with nature, you know, the sacred geometry of the spider web. So they're very much with the flow. They don't go against the grain of natural and spiritual law. They work with it. And um, they weave a beautiful world with the resources that they have in their immediate environment and the tools and skills within. So, Pisces, this is a great reading. And um, sorry if it was a little long. I wanted to read out of that book because this deck is just so beautiful. It's the Shadowscapes deck. Oh, can you see the top there? So that's by Stephanie Pui Moon La and Barbara Moore and it's just beautiful. The poetry, the artwork, they're all water it's gorgeous. So um, um that's a little back just so anyway, I think this is just beautiful. I'm excited for you Pisces. It looks great beautiful, excellent cards, um, but you do have the Four Swords crowning, and the Four Swords is coming up a lot lately, and, and, um, I've been quite tired lately, just body tired, you know, inner energy, mental energy and stuff, spiritual energy, but just kind of body fatigue, so maybe you just need to actually literally just sleep, <laughs> you know, if you have kids, maybe, you know, have your husband, wife, or family, or someone watch them for a few hours so you can get a nice long nap in or something to rejuvenate and get you back on par with all this beautiful stuff that you're just, it's coming in for you, and you're co-creating this um, wish fulfillment, okay? You, in conjunction with natural and spiritual law, you're bringing this forth into your life in a very tangible way. It's going to be very fulfilling for you. So, happy August. I will see you next time, my Pisceans. And um, blessings to you all. I love you all. Blessings, blessings, blessings.